Hola, buenos dias. Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you could join me for another video. It's your girl here, Daniela, Miss Four Lizard. And today I'm going to be updating my reading journal in my happy planner. And uh, yeah, I've been putting this off for a while now. And so I finally figured it was time to get on here and update my reading journal, my reading planner. So if you're interested in seeing how I update um, my reading challenge in my like book my book planner, my reading journal, my reading planner, I, I you know call it all kinds of things. Just stay tuned and keep on watching. So one of my many planners that I have is my reading planner, my reading journal, my book club planner. I call it like several different things. It has several different names, but basically it's just a planner that I've adopted slash adapted to be a reading journal for me. I'm a huge reader. I'm a huge bookworm. I love reading and I'm always trying to motivate myself uh, to read more. And um, so I set up a reading journal as one of my um, planners in my solar system. And it's in the middle of one of my, you know, my Franken planner here. So um, I have a planner before it that's something else. And then this is where it starts. So for the divider that separates, you know, the planners from each other, I'm actually using one of the um, dividers from the Welcome to the Book Club uh, Happy Planner that uh, Happy Planner put out last year i think it finished last year i was using this one for my reading journal and this was i believe the december divider and i thought it was so cute and perfect i think it's such a beautiful like cover for my reading journal so i went ahead and i used it for the divider that separates my planners uh this planner from the other planners so it kind of just you know sets the stage for my reading journal and following that divider i have um some scrapbook paper that i put together with a bunch of different uh stickers from the antiquarian sticker books that i got at barnes and nobles as well as i got this sticker from my local bookstore and this is kind of like the opening page into the rest of my reading journal. Um, right at the very beginning of my reading journal, before we get into the monthlies and the weekly pages, I have my reading challenge, which is um, just like a list of all the books that I've been reading throughout the year. So I kind of want to have like, before we get into the actual planner pages, I want to set up my little reading challenge. So every time I finish a book, I want to put it I want to like um, print out a picture of it and then put it down in this section and that way I just kind of have like a running record of all of the books that I read this year and at the end of the year I'll be able to have this spread showing all of the books that I finished in 2022. And so that's how my reading journal is set up. And then I have more decorative stickers over here. This is a, lo a local bookstore um, to me that I really like uh, going to. And I have a bunch of bookish uh, stickers that I got from my uh, antiquarian bibliophile sticker book from Barnes and Nobles. This is a quote from Dracula. And then on this page is where I actually start printing out the photos of the books. And right now I just have um, one page uh, before we get into the actual planner pages of my reading journal. And so I paper clip my pages together so that way, uh, you know, I don't have like this random weekly page just hanging out in the middle. Uh, that way I can go straight to the March overview and then we have the March divider. And right now for my book planner, I'm using a horizontal layout from Marabou Designs. This is my, um, this is my monthly view and I use the bookish sticker book from the Happy Planner in my book planner because I feel like that's just so perfect. And for my monthly view, I write down like book club meetings here. I also write down when I started reading books as well as when I finished reading books as well as when I purchase books. I'll put like any major bookish events like book fairs, things like that. Maybe even like, um, you know, author visits to a bookstore, things like that, that I actually have to, you know, like plan for or be aware of. I put that information there. And in the weekly pages, I just use them as kind of like note-taking pages. Um, so this is the first week in March. And again, I use mostly the bookish sticker book from the Happy Planner. And I'm very simple with this uh, 
format and how I decorate and stuff. I've always said that I'm not such a decorative like person. It's not the focus for me. For me, it's like what is important is me actually using um, the journal or the pages like how I want them to be used and for me this has always been sort of like the, the point of having a reading journal is to kind of take notes about everything that I'm reading uh, particularly for those books that I'm reading for book clubs that way I can reference back my pages I can even reference quotes and it helps me you know talk about the books more I have this really cute stamp that I got from a Japanese bookstore in Los Angeles and it's like a book stamp where it just has like a couple of books together and just on the front of the book you can write down like the name of the book as well as like the date you started. So I use this stamp whenever I start a book or whenever I'm like talking about a book. Like this page for example, I was like all these notes are about this particular book um, which is The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina, this one right here by Zoraida Cordova. And um, I haven't taken a picture of that book yet because I haven't finished so I won't be putting that in my reading challenge. But yeah, that is my... Um, my reading journal, my book club journal, and in the back here I just have some stickers in a sticker protector sheet that, um, that these are like the book club stickers. So that way if I'm on the go and I want to pull for some bookish stickers, I always have a couple of stickers that fit the theme of this planner here close at hand. And something that I've been thinking about and meaning to kind of start working on in this ep in this uh, journal and this planner is I'm thinking of just forgetting about the time element in this planner. Like this is a horizontal uh, weekly planner format, but you know some weeks I write a lot and some weeks I don't write a lot. And I've always liked the look of like filled out pages. And so what I'm thinking of doing is just kind of like widening out the days and the dates and just filling in, you know, with like a color with a box sticker or something like covering it with a box sticker and then just writing in the date that I actually that it actually is. So if it's a really busy week for me, I could, you know, write Monday and then the next time I write is like Friday and then maybe next Tuesday I'll write and so I could just white out the days of the week and the numbers and then put in my own dates and that way maybe I I just go like that way it's like I don't feel like I have to keep up with this pace. I mean, it's fine, I can do that, but it, it'll just be like a lot of blank space because I can't necessarily, you know, write in every single day. Like I wish I could, but when you have as many planners as I do, like you don't, you don't have the time to like hit every single planner every single day. And so I'm thinking of kind of switching this to be more of like, um, just like an, an undated journal and just, you know, sticking to my own timeline for like how much I'm writing in this. I was thinking of switching to like a happy notes for this section, but the thing is that I do really like the dividers of, um, I like the dividers of like that a planner gives you. And I like this, like the monthly view as well, because I do, you know, write down things on the monthly. So I still want to be using the monthly. So that's the only reason why I wouldn't switch to just a happy notes and, you know, make this into more of a journal as opposed to a planner. It's because I still want that planner element to it. I still want this monthly page. And I also really like having the different dividers and seeing the different dividers, you know, as the months change. So I think I might start that this week. I, and actually, I did start that this week. All this that I've written down, I actually wrote down yesterday, which was Monday. And if I was technically still following this planner format, I would have written this down Monday right here. But because I had so much blank space left over on this page, I didn't want to waste those pages. So I just went ahead and wrote it down like Saturday through the notes section. And now it gives it a much more like full appearance. And I like that a lot. And you know, if it so happens, I only fill up like four pages this month, and then I have this these pages left over, what I could do is just like transfer them over to the next month and keep on like stacking up um, these like unused pages. And then I could just continue to use them, you know, as I need them. Um, I can always reuse and redate Happy Planner paper. So I think I might do that. I might like, 
just give up on the time section and that way give myself a little bit more of that of a of breathing room when it comes to like you know maintaining my planners i don't know if that made sense at all hopefully it did but anyways um so right here i have a couple of photos of books i finished and so what i need to do now is um is glue these down and kind of set up this page here let's see yeah i need to glue these down and set up this page and um oh, and then just update this so it seems like i can only fit six different uh books yeah i can only fit in six different books per per page i can I can almost fit in nine, but I would have to cut some of these and I don't want to do that. So I think I'm just going to do six different books here. There we go. Might pull that down a little bit there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down and then add some of these little review uh, stickers down on the bottom. So the first book I read in 2022 was The Last Beautiful Girl by Nina Lauren. This is a YA like haunted mansion story. I thought it was very shallow and not that interesting. I read it for a book club I'm part of and I gave it two out of five stars. It has a beautiful cover though. And then I read Hood Feminism, Notes from the Woman That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. This was a really short book and it went over like the very fundamental principles of intersectional feminism and how gender and race interact uh, within feminism and it was a really good book i think it really you know distilled huge issues into very digestible and like easy to understand um short chapters and so i highly recommend it for anyone who's interested in intersectional feminism and um, i actually listened to this on audible all of the books that I have here that are like just um, actual f like uh, like screenshots of books as opposed to like staged photos like these, these are all books I listen to on Audible be and that's why I don't have the physical copy to like make a cute photo like this. Um, so these four books I actually had the physical copies and I read, you know, I read the physical copy and so I made cute photos. But these two are just like images I took from Google Images because I read them on Audible and or like I listened to them on Audible. So that's why there's like the difference in style. But yeah, Hood Feminism, that one was a good book. Next, I read The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. This is the second book by Anne Leckie that I have read. I read Ancillary uh, Justice um, last year and I really liked that book. The Raven Tower, I think, was her first book, and it's more of a fantasy than a science fiction, I would say. Um, Anne Leckie's like, much more well-known series, the Ancillary series, is science fiction, but this one was a little bit more fantasy for me, and it's, yeah, it's set in this whole other world where, like, gods, um, are common and um, they're much more involved in like our everyday lives and this story is a political drama I would say between you know um, different uh, royal families as well as like different gods and it's just it's really really good I highly recommend The Raven Tower I just love Anne Leckie like everything she writes I think is so good and then we have um Atomic Hobbits by James Clear. Let me put this down here. Atomic Habits by James Clear. So I would call this Atomic Habits a self-help book, a motivational book. It's all about, it's like a how-to manual. It's all about making, how to make habits uh, sustainable, how to make habit formation easy, how to maintain habits. It's really good, I would say. Um, I got a lot of good ideas from it. It motivated me to uh, you know continue to try to make certain habits that i've been trying to develop and stay consistent with I, it motivated me to kind of make some changes to how i was approaching them so that i would make them a bit more easily uh achievable and so yeah it was a good read i felt like it like it was easy to get through i listened to it in audible and actually i think that is the ideal way to read it because for me self-help books are a little bit like you're not it's it's not like 
they're being written to like be highly stylized like the author is not trying to make the language beautiful the author is trying to like make the language accessible and easily understandable and so for me like listening to it on audible is like a little bit more um it's more bearable i would say because the book itself is written in a very like conversational i would say tone it's not written like a work of fiction you know it's not written like a fantasy novel and so for me like reading something that's a little bit more stylized like the raven tower i prefer to do that with the physical copy um because i feel like i get lost a little bit um with more like stylistically complicated works on audible like it's easier for me to read something that's a little bit more like plain spoken or listen to something that's plain spoken than complicated on audible if that makes sense so that one was really good um to highly recommend that one and then we have this one right here this is called nothing but blackened teeth it's by cassandra ka and this was a really tiny book it was about 120 pages and it's a japanese like horror story and i didn't like it at all i was so intrigued by the cover and like the synopsis but it just didn't it wasn't good it like the characters were very shallow they were all really unlikable and it just made me like not invested at all in the story i didn't like the writing i felt like the author was really trying to be super stylized but it just kind of would fall flat and it was just like using big words for no other reason than to like use big words. I don't think they fit well with each other. There were some cases where the author did, I think, achieve like a uh, good imagery, but uh, a lot of the times I just felt like she was, you know, writing with a thesaurus open next to her and just like picking out words at, you know, at random and just trying to force as much like syllable, <laughs> complicated syllable words into her book as possible. I didn't like it at all. And so I, yeah it was i read this for a book club so um yeah it wasn't super um not my favorite and then the last book that i finished recently was the inherent inheritance of orquidea divini divina by zoraida cordova and i wanted to love this book so much it has such a beautiful cover and the story like the story itself is really beautiful and intricate but it just didn't go all the way there for me like i gave it like, actually let me just grab my little stickers here i have my stickers here let me grab this i gave it four out of five stars because ugh, like i wanted to love it so bad but i was reading a review online about it that kind of captured like what i was feeling about this like it captured it really well like it said that this review that i read online it said that this book like had everything in it to make it like a wonderful book it has like intergenerational like family drama it has magical realism it has like uh unique interesting uh, characters it has like a circus in it it has magic it has you know fantasy it has all these elements in in it that should make for a really compelling story but I think it's just there's too much going on there is yeah there's just it's too colorful it's too flavorful it's like a classic case of too many you know too many flavors too many cooks spoiling the broth it's just like there's too much going on and I feel like the author could have toned it down a little bit and really like explored certain elements of it or like focused on certain things but in the end the end result is that there's like way too much going on and none of it is really developed very well or explored too well and so it just kind of gets chaotic and i feel like at the end of the book that i still haven't really like like i've only scratched the surface on various things and it feels like very surface level and i wish that we would have gotten a little bit deeper stories um, more explanation on things there's a lot of things in the book that are just kind of yeah they're just not very well explained um and i don't feel like i got like an in-depth like you know experience of a lot of things in the book and so 
yeah, I just, I wish that I would have loved this book, but it just didn't do it for me. So I gave it four out of five stars. Nothing but Black and Teeth, I gave two stars. Did I? I think I did. And then Atomic Habits, I gave four out of five stars. Yeah, I gave four out of five stars and not five stars because I think that the book is um, pretty, oh, I just wrote five stars. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Ugh. I'm gonna have to peel that up because I don't want to give it five stars. So I gave it four out of five stars because I think it's pretty simple and straightforward. And while it has really good advice, I don't think it said anything that I was absolutely mind blown by. It was all pretty like sensible to me. And I felt like I had already incorporated a lot of the advice that he gives like into my habit formation, habit building. It was nice to like hear someone else like outline all the steps that you already do. And it's cool to see like the, the science and the like psychological why behind like why those steps work. Um, and, and to have that validation because I feel like I have taken, you know, a while to really develop habits and I've discovered through like trial and error what makes me, you know, uh, what motivates me and inspires me to achieve a habit and um, I can see why it works for me but it's nice to hear like in the book James Clear explain why like certain methods and strategies work for a lot of people and so I felt like it was cool to see you know to hear someone explain habit formation and um, especially since you like since I already feel like I do a lot of the things in there but I didn't discover anything like absolutely like mind-blowing there was a few things in the book that I was like oh okay like that makes sense I'm gonna like try to incorporate that into my habit building but there were only a handful of moments like that in the book. I felt for the most part, I already kind of already intuitively knew a lot of what was going on in the book. And so I don't think I like gained a lot from it, but it was a really good read. And I feel like for someone who doesn't think about habits a lot, um, which I think about habits a lot and, you know, I really try to develop and maintain my habits so I feel for someone who doesn't think a lot about habits that this would be like a really good book for them but if you already feel like you're not on habit building 101 like I feel like I'm kind of more advanced in my habit building strategies so I feel like this is a little bit more like 101 for me it was a little bit simple elementary it was still really good though but uh, again I just didn't learn that much from it and then the Raven Tower, I'm gonna give this five stars because it was awesome, it was so good, it was such a good story, well written, beautiful language, awesome characters, amazing plot line. Yeah, it's just, it was wonderful. I love Anne Leckie so much. So that is, those are my books that I've read in 2022 so far. I've read six books and I'm currently reading two more. I'm reading an episode in the life of a landscape painter. Let me see if I can actually show you these books. Yeah, I have my reading bag right here. So the two books I'm currently reading in like the physical copies, Episode in the Life of a Landscape Painter by Cesar Aira. This is a really short book. This is also for a book club I'm in. And I'm also reading this one. We Have Always Been Here, a Queer Muslim Memoir by Samra Habib. This is also for a book club. And this, I barely have started this one, or I haven't even started it. I just like picked it up and put it in my book bag. So it's 220 pages. Um, so it's not too long. And actually, I just got my Audible credit today. So I'm really excited to uh, find a book on Audible to start listening to. So that will be the third book that I am reading. I always tend to be reading like two physical um, 
books and then one like audible book as well as like two other physical books that I kind of read like a page or two every day so um but I usually tend to have like two like physical books that I um that I'm like actively reading these are my active reads right now and then I have a couple of like two other like larger books I try to read more passively like I'll pick them up read a few pages one week read a couple of pages the other week and I just like slowly read through them but those are like larger texts that um that yeah that I'm just trying to get through this year so this is it I really like how it turned out and um, I'm gonna start filling up this page here once I uh, finish a couple of books but for now I'm just gonna paper clip this back together and I hope you enjoyed um, you know doing this reading challenge update with me let me know what you're reading in the comments down below and I will catch you in my next video bye